What's up, everybody? It's your favorite head shop's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Fans Toys Tubes, which is their take on pipes. The G1 character that used the Huffer mold. And we'll take a look at him next to Huffer and talk about that a bit. We'll also take a look at him next to the X Transbots offering. But first, we're going to shout out Nick the Toy Guy, who I bought this from. And you can too if you copy the email that's in the description and start reaching out about future Fans Toys releases or perhaps even this one. Very good dude. Been very good to me. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and we'll start with accessories so he comes with a extra set of eyes these are the blue eyes if you would prefer them over the red eyes that you saw in the initial footage um, painted the same way which is beautiful uh, with a metallic uh, blue and silver looks nice he also comes with the alternate G1 head which I must admit has a lot of character uh, in it you just unscrew it and screw it in so to speak this has the metallic red and then the blue paint which we will talk about here shortly and then he also comes with this. I forget exactly what this is. Is this the eye of Metroplex? I forget what this was. Um, but he comes with it. I'm guessing it's a, that thing from that episode. These pieces do click around. Uh, gray flat plastic with the orange translucent. It's not the most impressive piece, I'll be honest with you, um, as an accessory goes. It doesn't have that, like, fans toys feel to it. It feels like something that would come with, like, a Planet X uh, release or something, just like the translucent mixed with the gray just doesn't have uh the kind of fan stories feel if i had to pick this out of a lineup like which one wasn't a f like of these three even which one was not created by fan stories it would be this one as far as fixing the fans toys kind of transformation it's really just the wrist which is kind of self-explanatory the only other bit are these now the issue with mine is that this was what allows you to get a full rocker. So we'll go ahead and do the kind of uh, ankle articulation right now. So you get an ankle tilt up, it's ever so slight. You get an ankle tilt down, ever so slight. And then you get a full rocker with the toe extended. But in box, it comes with the toe collapsed and I can't get this one out. So it prevents you from using it. So I'm just going to collapse them both for the sake of uh, symmetry and move forward but um hopefully this will come loose at some point during the review and let's talk about the figure and we'll get in tight on the head skull for dennis so much like the eyes we already talked about this is a metallic silver with the red and then the blue so we got to talk about the blue paint it's not there's some parts that look better than others but a lot of it comes across very flat instead of that like you know kind of metallic-esque or flecked um, metallic flecked paint that they used that they used to and uh, maybe even arguably usually use however it is getting more sporadic um, it doesn't have that that pop to it uh, like the abdomen has it maybe a little bit but like the legs and stuff they, they just look very flat uh, which is unfortunate to me perhaps not to you the head is on a hinged swivel so you can get actually a surprising bit up, even though he bumps across, you know, this back bit there and a little bit down and a swivel till you bump up against these shoulder pads. All right. Then you have, we'll back out a bit, waist swivel. It does eventually bump up against the pelvis piece, but you do have it and you have an ab crunch. Nicely done, fans toys. Um... Nothing to talk about paint-wise because it has no accents or anything. It just is what it is. There was also a lot of, like, l like lubricant on this dude, so to speak, uh, right out of the box that I still have on my hands and I'm going to wash here soon. Uh, we have the shoulders, which have the tires attached to them. In between the tires, uh, you can move them out of the way and get the arm up to 90 degrees. If you had the tires on, you get stuck real quick. Um, unless you angle it forward or out to the side or something along those lines. Once again, not entirely the best, but it's a universal joint, so you get the swivel around as well. And actually this, okay, that's staying stuck. Just making sure. Bicep swivel right above the elbow. The elbow is actually really well done. It's a single hinge with a deep bend that gets you past 90 degrees, I mean, almost for the full run. Exquisitely done. Very nice. And then we also have um, the wrist. They swivel. I want to talk about this for a minute. Yeah, the pipes obviously on the side. I'm going to get them out of the way for a minute. This wrist guard here, it comes in package, I think, right, but it looks wrong to me. Uh, 
just in terms of was aesthetically pleasing. So I think it comes like this, and I think this is technically right, or at least how they have it on like the box pictures and stuff, um, the promotional pictures and so forth, like that. But like that cut in the wrist to me is not a visually pleasing cut to me. So uh, the good news is is that both pieces swivel. So I've been swiveling this up and then swiveling the wrist down and then obviously tap, tapping that back in. And that to me has a more finished, more complete look. I don't know if it's accurate or not. I don't really care, but uh, it looks better to me. Uh, the silver is also pretty nice. Also, it's not the typical silver that Fans Toys uses. It is a different shade. It almost has like a brownish tint to it, um, which I wouldn't necessarily think I would like uh, if you were to tell me. But in person, in, um, it doesn't really come across in pictures or anything. It just looks like silver in pictures. In person, it has like this brownish hue, but I kind of like it. I think it gives it a little bit of a, a flair, like a little bit different, something different, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a, a nutcase which is both possible. So you have hip skirts, they get up, also on the side. For universals, guess what our universals have? Something the Power Glide didn't, ratchets. Not out to the side though, however you do get the full Van Dam, but it has ratchets forward and back for the full Monty, which is nice. I'd like them out to the side too, but I'll take something over nothing for sure. Uh, thigh swivel around the casing of the universal, which is nice. Single hinge knee, but once again, gets you past 90 degrees, so not bad. Uh, very simple, very plain legs, uh, lower legs that I think could have used some some sauce. And if they weren't going to give it more sculpt work because they wanted to keep it super tune accurate or they weren't going to give it um, any paint accents because they wanted to keep it super G1 accurate, uh, a more vibrant paint job would have been appreciated by me. That's subjective, of course. Size comparison wise, there he is next to the Huffer. And I'm like, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that it really is a completely different take on the character. Like it gives the character a real moment to kind of shine and have his moment in the day, you know? His moment in the sun, as it were. It's not just a reuse of Huffer. And that is like, there's something really satisfying about that. So bravo in that regard. And then there he is next to the x Transbots or KFC. I can't remember which one they were going by at the time. Pipes, uh, which we will do a versus of in the future not this week but probably next week so look forward to that all right so let's get him transformed and one thing we don't have to worry about is the ankles because they're already done but we can do the hands so open up your guns here they'll just flap around rotate the wrist so that the the moon cut is facing the outward which is you know the way i said that i think that they intend it to be and then your other wrist i think it just go like this actually maybe just spin it around yeah, spin it around. And then open this flap and then wrap up the wrist and collapse this back in. And if it's not perfectly lined up, it won't close. There you go. And then you can just bend that 180 and we'll just sit that to the side for a moment. It's gonna collapse into the chest, but we'll do the legs before we get to that. All right, so same on the other side. We're gonna open up this gun here. We're going to rotate the, I'm sorry, I did it too much, the, the wrist like the, the wristwatch, for lack of a better term. And then we're going to rotate the hand so that we can open up this flap and tuck all that in and tab it in together, bend it at the elbow, and then sit it out to the side. Then we'll move on to the legs. So untab this piece here, move the out of the way, and then rock this whole piece down. Then combiner wars the thigh in. And this part you hear, you have to really make sure that you get that piece to click in. If it doesn't click in, it won't work. Then bring this piece up, lock it back together, and fold your toe in. Now, if yours extends, <laughs> just uh, collapse it. If it doesn't, then um, you know, welcome to my world and you should be fine. On this side, we're gonna do the same thing. Open that, and then we'll spin this down untab that once again we have to rock this down and then once you get it down you have to really make sure it's tabbed in bring your panel back up lock it back in place and then you want to combine your two sections here and then make sure your hip skirts are all cleaned 
And then uh, pop the head up and we'll finish the arms here. You have tabs on the shoulders that need to go and collapse and uh, lock in to the flank area. So same on this side and locked into the flank. That did it automatically. All right. Um, and this is where the kind of the bulk of the work in my opinion really is. So untab the backpack and you have to disconnect this tab, bring up this piece, and then bring up the entire back windshield section and just get it up and out of the way. For these pieces to rotate out. So in order to do so, you have these armatures here that just had to be positioned a certain way in order to clear them. Where this windshield moves, there's a pin that will slide. And once you have slid it, you can rotate that out. And then the bottom piece has the kind of M on it that'll rotate around and just kind of get that in position. Same here. And we'll go ahead and slide that forward and then slide the M out. Put your head back and then this comes up and over, at which point you can lock in these side sections, you know, and bring this down. And sort of angle this best you can. This gets a little wonky donkey, to be honest with you, but then tab that back in. And then this doesn't tab in, which seems weird. Like it seems like it should have a place to tab in, but it doesn't. But when this comes up and over, uh, there are two tabs here and here that will tab in up top. And that's that. We'll go back and, oh, but my piece came out. <laughs> but it's okay, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I think it might look better that way. Um, then bring these up. Oh, but will it not? Traps. All right, so we'll try again. There we go, that's better. And then we should be in a position to lock these in. Yes. And there's one. And there's the other. And I'll clean it up and take a look at it. And there it is. And I think it's charming. Um, easy process to get to for the most part. Rolls like a champ. Rubber tires. Chrome rims. Uh, we have the grill here that matches the other silver. Then we have translucent for the headlights, which is fine. Um, the M is sculpted in there, which is nice. You know, it's, I mean, it's fair. I, I'm still not 100% sure I have that right, this back flap there, but I think you get the idea either way. You know, I think it's fine. It doesn't really look like a real truck in any way, shape, or form, but, you know, that's okay, I think. Um, it's not, I, I don't think it's trying to. You know, I think those days are, are beyond behind us. And it doesn't really bother me too much. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of fun, I guess. But yeah, decent enough little fella. Let me show you what he looks like next to Tiger Tracks. You know. So, I, I would say it fits fairly well. Moving on to final thoughts, we'll start with the negatives. There are some awkward articulation points. In order to get this head turned to the side, you have to lift his chin up and go over the shoulder pads. He has typewriter fingers. And in order to use the outward shoulder movement, you have to manipulate the tire in order to do so. So to be fair, a bit of a laundry list. I'm also really not crazy about the blue they used. I wish it popped a bit more in that old school style of Fans Toys Deco that they still use from time to time. It looks like Scourge is getting that treatment, for instance, which is nice. And the only other thing that I have is that, for robot mode anyway, is that he is a bit back heavy. It's not insane and it's easily manageable, but he is a bit back heavy. You know, and 
in regard to like the build, it's a really good build. However, in the same breath, some stuff is too tight, but I think that stuff will loosen over time. So I'm not really gigging them for that. And I'll take the too tight joints over the too loose joints like Power Glide any day of the week. I do long for the days of like realistic vehicle modes, but I think that those days are just behind us. I don't think they're doing them anymore. So I don't think it's necessarily fair to judge it on that. And that's all I got. Moving on to the positives, I really like the sculpt from head to toe, even like the vents in the chest give it a little bit of love, a little bit of pizzazz on that very flat blue. I love the silver choice that they used. It's something different, and I like it. They did do some impressive stuff with the articulation in spite of my criticisms of it. Really impressive elbow and knee bend for them both being single hinged. Also, we have an ab crunch, which isn't always par for the course with this company. And we finally have a pipes with the, uh, or at least I should say I do, because the back cube may have, but with the kind of cannons on the arms, which is nice. The materials feel good. All kind of typical fans toy stuff that was lacking on Power Glide in that regard is fixed here. While I do miss the days of realistic alt modes, I have to in the same breath acknowledge that there is something fun and cute about the kind of cartoonish looking vehicle mode. Like, it, it, yes, it looks like something my kids would play with for sure, but in the same breath, there's something charming about it. And the transformation is a breath of fresh air, especially after Power Glide. So even if that means I have to make some kind of alt mode sacrifices in order to have like an enjoyable experience, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll gladly, gladly take it. So yeah, I mean, when you add all that up, it's a recommend from me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.